Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Berry. I am the director of the Center for Chinese Studies at UCLA, and I am, it's my great honor to be here at the Asia Society of Southern California for a dialogue with the incredible award-winning film director, Lo Ye, whose new film, Saturday Fiction, is just being released here in North America. And we're here for a special dialogue about this really incredible film. Uh, of course, director Lo Ye is well known throughout the Chinese uh, film community and the art film community. Uh, he is the director of such films as Sujo River, Summer Palace, Mystery, Blind Massage, uh, and really one of the more innovative film directors working in China over the last couple of decades. And so we're gonna ease into the conversation with a few questions about his background before really talking about Saturday fiction. So I wanna begin by welcoming uh, Mr. Lo Ye, and I wanna start by asking about what first brought you to film? What, what are the circumstances that made you want to become a filmmaker? Uh, Rongxing,有这个机会,请到罗耶导演参加我们今天的对谈节目。我想今天我们对谈的主要的重点会放在您最新的一个片子,就是蓝星大剧院。但是我想一开始我们是否可以从最初你是怎样,就是当初怎么
每天上课是大家围在一起，然后可以随便的呃，可以随便的插话，可以骂人，可以争论，都可以。呃，对我来说，呃，是一个非常呃兴奋的阶段，就是呃啊，我觉得大学就是应该这样好玩的。嗯，然后是自己拍作业。呃，如果你没有钱，你会去找呃负责设备或者说呃其他摄影系的同学，请他们吃饭，让他们来帮你忙。呃，差不多那时候电影学院是是这样的一个状况。然后我所知道的是，呃，我们的第一年的看的影片差不多是呃。呃，之前电影学院有史以来看的加起来的总和，所以呃，这是我们后来才知道的。所以当时我们不觉得呃，怎么说不觉得有特别奢侈啊？呃，我们我们还我们觉得还不够，我们觉得还不够自由，我们觉得还应该再给我们更多的呃呃条件和可能性。呃，但是现在来看，好像。那时候已经足够自由了。So that was a time when it was just imbued with freedom and excitement. It was just a really incredible time to be at the Beijing Film Academy. While I was a student, I had a professor named Zhou Chuanji,、uh, who's kind of a legendary figure at the Beijing Film Academy, and it was just incredible to take his courses. And I remember he would show up to class with two packs of cigarettes, one for himself. And one that he'd pass out to the students, and we all smoke and attend class. And it was such an environment that instead of the passive situation where you just sit there and listen to lectures, we were debating, we were yelling at each other, we were cursing with each other. We were.、Uh, it was just a lively, really、uh, incredibly active environment in his classroom, and that was an exciting period. And it was great to be a student at that time. Um, for me, I felt like this is what a university education should be like. This is how it should be.、Uh, it was just so vibrant and so invigorating. And of course, there was the period where we all had to make student films.、Uh, often, we didn't have enough money,、uh, and so you would find ways. You'd invite someone from the cinematography department out to dinner, and they would help shoot your film. And so we'd, you know, help each other out. And it was this kind of communal environment that we formed by mutually helping each other. Um, and it wasn't until later I learned that we had actually seen more films than any of the previous classes of the Beijing Film Academy put together.、It、was just so much film that we were exposed to. But for us, we didn't realize it. We,、uh, you know, we didn't we didn't think that it was any kind of luxury, and we, just, we actually wanted more. We were just like sponges, and we just wanted to experience more, see more films. And it, that's really what it was like—a really kind of dynamic and exciting time. And I want to follow up with this because you and many of your classmates were later labeled as the so-called sixth generation.、Um, and I'm wondering, was there a communal kind of sense that you formed together during that time? 刚刚你提到提到说，您跟同学之间经常会互相帮忙啊，或者请个朋友吃饭，他就帮你当当摄影师或者接一些设备等等。后来你们这一这一这一届都被称为第六代。那个时候，你们已经开始有一种团队精神吗？你们这个已经开始开始什么时候开始产生这种啊、呃、共同的一个一个理念吧？那是在呃毕业以后了，因为呃呃八五年是电影学院的呃很少的一次呃所有系的全面招生，也就是导演、美术、摄影、录音。呃，表演所有的各个门类，它同时有八五级，所以呃，很正常。在毕业以后，你就会找同届的呃一些同学来参加你的工作，因为你们受到的是差不多是同样的一个学学习背景，所以很能够沟通。这样实际上就是呃，我或者说呃我同学好像第一第一个作品都是呃同学一起来完成的。So you know the label of sixth generation, all of that came later. But you know one thing that was unique about our class, the nineteen, the class at Beijing Film Academy admitted in 1985, was the first time in the school's history 
that students for all the different departments were recruited in the same year. Previously, they had been spread out. And so that year, there were students in the director major, in cinematography, in acting, editing, all the categories were admitted together. What that meant was that we got to know each other very well. We took the same classes. It was easy for us to communicate. And so it was pretty natural for us to work together. And for our first work that most of us produced, uh, all of us kind of worked together on those early films. And I would love to keep talking about your background, but I think we should kind of move a little bit forward to the new film that uh, is our, our uh, job today to talk about, which is Saturday Fiction, which is just being released. And it's a really interesting and complex story. Uh, it's also a very kind of cosmopolitan and international story. Uh, you can hear English, French, Japanese, German being spoken in the film. Um, and I wanna kind of go to the origin of this. And I know your wife and producer, uh, Mai Ying Lee wrote the screenplay, but it was also adapted from two novels, uh, not one, but two, uh, a Chinese novel by Hong Ying called uh, Death in Shanghai and a Japanese novel by Richie Yokomitsu called Shanghai. And so I wanna hear about the origin of, of the story and especially how you took two completely different novels and combined them. Uh, so, uh, 有有人讲英文在法文日文 在这个过程当中会面临什么样的一个挑战吧? <笑>所以他在舞台上的形象和在舞台下的情况我觉得它是一个非常有意思的很有趣的一个小说来叙述一个他之前的事情碰到同样的问题和同样的挑战
，这两个实际上也决定了，呃，这个影片实际上不但是和原作的对话，也是和呃历史的对话。So, uh, you know, this novel really, uh, the the film really began with Hong Ying, uh, an incredible Chinese writer who wrote a this 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 novel, uh, Death in Shanghai, and in that novel, the main protagonist is an actor. An actor character, and so you have two layers—a kind of performance within a performance that's portrayed in the novel. There's two layers of narrative, and that's the earliest aspect of this that attracted me and that pulled me in. And I was really eager to explore that aspect in the film. I thought it would be fascinating to to delve into these two layers.、Um, I'm a huge fan of Hong Ying's work, but actually, you know, this really isn't my favorite novel of hers. I feel she has other novels that are more exceptional than this one. But it was that aspect that initially pulled me in,、uh, and I found extremely、uh, intriguing and fascinating. And what I also was very much attracted to is the fact that this is a novel set in the 1930s and 40s. However, she approaches the subject matter with a very contemporary perspective. And you can see how she, as somebody living in China today, is kind of negotiating and approaching、uh, these characters and these settings from the 30s and 40s. That's what I was really interested in. And you probably know, I years ago, about a decade ago, I made another film、uh, set in Shanghai during this period called Purple Butterfly. And so I had a good sense of the challenges and、uh, the the type of approach that I might have to take if I were to. Uh, approach that period, and so I felt a common, a kind of a, a commonality between what she went through writing that novel and what I went through、uh, making that film, and so I knew what those challenges and those problems were.、Um, the the other、uh, the Japanese novel that we pulled in, we brought in various plot details, but there are two main differences when we look at this whole adaptation. Uh, process and one is that we emphasize that performance within a performance aspect, and the second is that we completely change the ending. And through doing this, I feel like the film is in dialogue,、uh, not only with history but also kind of a dialogue with those original literary works. Because you, 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 夫人哈，总坐在身边，她要不要啊？针对这个问题讲两句吧。I'm wondering because I believe the producer and screenwriter is right next to Loya. Uh, I wonder if she wants to say a few words about about the adaptation process. A special guest. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you. But, uh, 不用了，谢谢。因为你们时间有限，还是保持你们的这个温柔。Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ingli is going to pass because of the time consideration, so we're just going to、uh, continue. And you, you just mentioned this、uh, performance within a performance, and of course, the main actor that's undertaking that is the incredible. Gong Li, who is a kind of legend of the contemporary Chinese film world, could you talk about working with Gong Li and the challenges of this role for her? I mean, it's really、uh, she's been in so many different films, but we see a side of her in this film that I don't think we've seen in any of her other work. Ah, 刚刚你提到这个戏中戏，而且担任戏中戏的主要一份子就是巩俐女士，她是啊，中国电影史上我觉得最有影响力的一个演员之一吧。而且他演了这么多电影，但是在这一部片子里头，我觉得你真的让我们看到巩俐的另外一面吧。啊，能不能谈谈您跟巩俐的合作经验吧？呃，很高兴跟呃巩俐合作啊，她是一个非常优秀的演员，然后同时她也是一个明星。呃，这个小说里面的主人公他就是一个大明星，所以呃，首先呃。怎么说呢？我我觉得就是让一个呃不是明星的来扮演明星，这肯定是一个噩梦。呃，所以我们在呃明星当中选择这个角色的扮演者，巩俐当然她是一个最合适这个角色的。然后呃，我们开始工作以后，我发现她是呃非常优秀，然后她还不会特别惧怕。挑战，这个是感到我感到非常兴奋的。这样的话，就说呃，我们可以从呃重新开始，然后呃从人物开始，呃来寻找这个呃形象的一个整个的呃这个故事，这个人物的呃整个的这个性格呃习惯呃。
，我觉得非常刺激，就是和他的合作，呃，而且我觉得他给人物带进了一些呃不定性的因素，就是不稳定的一个因素，让呃观众在呃。看电影的时候，呃，有时候会摸不着这个人物的，呃，他到底在想什么？这个实际上是非常好的。So Gong Li is not only an incredible actor, but she's also a star.、Um, and the character in the original novel is also a star.、Uh, she's, a, she's not just an actress, but a kind of Very, very famous, and so when we started casting, I knew that we wanted to look for stars. It just wouldn't work if we just had some actress no one ever heard of playing the role of this this incredibly influential Chinese star. And so we started looking at、uh, various celebrities, and we were so happy that、uh, Gong Li accepted our invitation to take on this role. And I think she was just the perfect choice and the most suitable candidate、uh, to play this role. And I was extremely excited and. Uh, once we started working together to see what an incredible actress she was and how unafraid of challenges that she was, she just goes for it and will、uh, face those challenges head on. And once we cast her, it also gave us an opportunity to rethink this role and to rethink the image that she's going to present, her characteristics, her personality,、um, how she's going to express herself. And so we kind of. Had this window where we could just reimagine how that's going to work, and that was a really exciting process for me as a film director.、Um, it also gave me these moments of unexpected bliss because she, her performance, would reveal certain elements that were not, the opposite of being typecast. There was this unpredictability in her performance, and she would do things that nobody expected. Uh, nobody saw it coming, and I think that was really just wonderful to see that on screen. 呃，就是呃，我记得开始的时候，我跟巩俐说，我说这是一个非常具有挑战性的一个呃角色，因为呃，他是一个明星。呃，我说明星你不用演，因为你就是明星。呃，同时他是一个间谍，间谍你不能演，因为没有间谍看的像是间谍一样。So, uh, this is a very challenging character. And I remember when I first met Gong Li to discuss the role, I just talked to her about it, and I said it's an extremely challenging role for the following reason: there are two sides to this character. On the one hand, she's a star, and you don't have to act for that because you're already a star. That's who you are.、Uh, but her other role is that of a spy, and that's also something that you can't act because. Spies.、Um, the the last thing that they that you want to do is be discovered, and so you need to suppress that.、Uh, you don't you don't want to look like a spy. It needs to be kind of concealed, and so bringing that out in the performance was extremely challenging.、Um, most of your films, not all of them, but most of them are extremely contemporary, just really of the moment.、Um, We think of Weekend Lover, Sujo River, Spring Fever. I mean, they all have this kind of pulsating、uh, sentiment of the, of the now.、Um, but this is a film set in 1940s Shanghai, and you did cover this period earlier, about a decade ago, with Purple Butterfly, which you mentioned.、Um, but I'm wondering, in order to really get into that. That historical period of the 30s and 40s, what kind of historical research did you do?、Um, I'm wondering also to what extent did the experience shooting Purple Butterfly a decade ago kind of give you a shortcut in terms of approaching、uh, various aspects of this film? 就是您的许多作品都有一个非常强的一个啊当代性吧，就是一直在拍当下，不管是《周末情人》《苏州》和呃《春风沉醉的夜晚》等等。啊、uh, ，我想在很多人的心目中，您就是一个最好，就是处理当代题材是最好的一个导演。但是实实际上，您过去十年前也拍过一个《紫蝴蝶》，也是处理这个大概三零年代、四零年代的老上海。那这一次回到老上海，您是采取什么样的一些，就做了什么样的功课，或者历史考究、这历史研究，为了融入那个年代？呃，另外呢，这个《紫蝴蝶》的拍摄经验是否给您那个兰心大剧院起了一些很具体的作用
，呃，其实从呃紫蝴蝶开始，呃，因为还有一些别的计划，所以呃一直在呃做。呃，三十年代、四十年代的历史的呃资料的收集和研究，呃，对我来说，呃，蓝星和紫蝴蝶如果比较的话，呃，从制作来说，呃，更轻松了，呃，更怎么说，就是更诚实的面对历史吧，呃，就是说，呃。我个人觉得，就是说，你很难恢复一个历史的瞬间，呃，你只能是从用今天的眼光去看那段时间，去看那个时刻。所以，呃，这个视角永远是呃，二零二零或者是二零一九年的，呃，你无法呃改变这个视角，所以你实际上。你拍的历史实际上是当下，这个呃，我觉得在紫蝴蝶阶段不是特别清楚，但是我觉得现在呃，在蓝心，我觉得非常明确了，呃，这样也解决了很多呃，所谓面对历史黑暗的麻烦，嗯，也就是说，历史是一个呃变化的概念。它是根据呃作者的视角而产生不断的变化的，呃，是可以被读的，可以被读解和解释的，呃，而实际上那个瞬间的呃究竟发生了什么，呃，是非常难去做精准的考证的，这也是怎么说呃我们的麻烦吧，就是作为呃今天的人对历史的那么一个呃麻烦吧。So,、uh, actually, after Purple Butterfly,、uh, there was a period because I was working on several other projects,、uh, some that maybe got made, others didn't. But that started a process where I spent a lot of time looking at this historical period of the '30s and '40s. I started doing a lot of research, collecting a lot of、uh, materials, and so it's kind of a long process of about a decade where I've been deeply involved in this this area. And if I had to compare Purple Butterfly with Saturday Fiction, you know, I would say that Saturday Fiction, in many ways, is a much more mature work. I've、uh, settled in in a certain way and and come to a certain stance about history that took me a while to get to, but I don't think I really had it when I shot Purple Butterfly. A lot of this has to do with your approach to history and. I think there's no way you can ever recreate what really happened. There's no way to bring that history alive again. All you can do is look at it from this contemporary perspective. We're always,、uh, you know, if I make a film now or two years ago, you know, it's the, it's 2020s imagination of that history in the 1940s.、Uh, that's the best we can do. We can never really create that that moment. And so, history is this process of. Uh, of transformation and 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 it's involved in this this approach, and I didn't have that when I was doing Purple Butterfly, but now I do, and I think that allows us to look at the darker side of history in a kind of more perceptive and just a different light, a very different approach. Once you have that、uh, mentality, that you're always locked in your contemporary perspective, and and that's just kind of your starting point.、Uh, it's a process. History is a process of change, and we change as well. And the work of art and the authors, all of this is transforming. And so, it's very difficult to go back and answer in definitive terms what happened, you know, in 1940 or 1930.、Um, that's always going to be a quandary that we face, and it's extremely difficult. But that's our challenge. That's our burden: is trying to、uh, unravel that. You know, a lot. Another、uh, facet of a lot of your works is the literary connection, and、uh, this came up a little bit already. But、uh, Spring Fever is is one work that has the shadow of Yudafu. They also a, a writer active during this period in the thirties, the twenties maybe.、Um, uh, Toyna is is a, a, a blind、uh, massage is an adaptation of Bifeu's novel, and so a lot of your work has this kind of these literary connections. And this film, Saturday Fiction. 
uh, just looking at the English title, it's different than the, the Chinese title refers to the name of the theater, but the English title, Saturday Fiction, immediately makes us think of uh, Li Bai Liu, Saturday, which was a, a very popular magazine in Shanghai during this period, uh, which featured Mandarin duck and butterfly style popular fiction, kind of pulp fiction. And I'm wondering when you were making the film, was that kind of a direct reference that you were thinking about? Were you thinking about Mu Shiying and Liu Nao and all of those Saturday style writers? Was that kind of a, a reference point? Uh, Shifu 首先这个比如说红影的小说因为他在一个历史洪流当中这也是这部影片或者说红影的小说感兴趣的一个部分So some of that reference actually comes from Hong Ying's novel, um, the original novel, uh, Death in Shanghai. It actually deals with some of the contemporary writers from that period, these so-called Saturday school writers or Mandarin duck and butterfly writers. And so that comes into her novel, it comes into the period, and I, as the kind of second author, Hong being the first, me being the second, or the auteur, the director, you know, I also want to provide my take on this group of writers and this kind of uh, literary movement. And so if we look at the Saturday School, you know, it's really an interesting group of writers, a very interesting literary movement. Uh, this is a group uh, that historically has been criticized by literary historians, by cultural historians, because they weren't revolutionary enough. They weren't kind of in step with the times. Um, they were living in the foreign concession areas. They were kind of imbued in this capitalistic lifestyle. They were writing love stories and all these frivolous kind of stories. And this was in direct conflict with the leftist literature and the revolutionary literature at the time. And so that's part of what drew me to Hong Ying's novel um, was this contemporary take on the writers who were active at that time and trying to rethink them and reposition uh, that period. You know, a lot of your work, it explores the, uh, the sentiment of identity and kind of, and, and also playing with identity, multiple identities, confused identities. Um, I'm, I'm probably the best example is your breakout work, which was Suzhou River, uh, where the characters played by Zha Hongsheng and Zhou Shun have this kind of, this multiple identity game, almost like, like Vertigo. Um, 
I, when I first time, when I first saw Saturday Fiction, very early on in the, in the film, there's a scene where Gong Li's character says, uh, you got the wrong person, you've misidentified me. And immediately I'm kind of brought back to that world of Sujo River. As the film progresses, uh, Saturday Fiction, we, we see more of that kind of identity play taking place. Uh, uh, not only is Gong Li's character uh, a spy, but later on she pretends to be a Japanese character to fool another character. There's a, a Miss Bai who later pretends to be Gong Li's character, uh, in that, who is then in turn pretending to be an actor in a play. And so there's so many layers of this. And I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the role of identity in your films. And you can take that however you want to, wherever you want to take it. identity. Ah,是都是都重神份的人物吧。然后一看那个蓝星大剧院的开头，巩俐不是对那个赵永廷说：“女人错了人。”那我马上会联想到那个苏州河这种这种神份错位的这个这个问题。后来蓝星大剧院好
And I think this is something that's very common even in everyday life. And you see this happen all around us. And so for actors um, and also my screenwriters, when we're talking about characters and characterization, I really go out of my way not to name them or not to label them, uh, not to give them a set identity. Instead, I wanna see where these characters go. Where does the story take them? Uh, kind of let's kind of figure out who this person is, what their personality is, and what kind of decisions that they would make in a real life type of situation and let that unfold organically. And so that's really kind of how I, I try to approach this. So if you, you know, sure, this character is a spy, but the last thing I'm going to do is just think stereotypically, okay, what, what are the 20 or 30 typical actions that a spy would do in a film and then try to check off the boxes? In fact, I do the exact opposite. And uh, we all know what spies do, and maybe she may or may not do some of those things in everyday life, but I think probably not. She, she's an actor in this film. Uh, but in her everyday life, are there aspects of acting? I don't know. I think there's a question there. There's a question mark we can leave hanging and what aspects of her everyday life are coming out of her role as an actor and what parts of her everyday life are coming out of a true emotion and a true state of who she really is and what her desires are. This is what really interests me. This is what I think all of my characters, what I'm trying to do with them is explore this process. And it's a process that's not set in stone and I like to keep it kind of, kind of organic because people after all are just too complicated and uh so that's how i'll answer that um let's talk real quick about the challenges of this film from a uh, production standpoint i mean talking about props art design costumes to recreate that world of 1940s uh shanghai what was the greatest challenge of that process uh, 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 不同的实景局部构成的，呃，它有连接问题，呃，然后还要复制一个呃那个酒吧到舞台上，呃，但是呃我团队我我对我的团队非常满意，呃，他们都很优秀，呃，完成了这个工作。So it was a lot of challenges, and to the biggest challenge was to find actual locations, uh, not to do this on a soundstage, but to use real life locations to, um, to shoot this film. And that was so central. Uh, the theater, that's the real theater, the uh, Peace Hotel, uh, where so many of the sequences, uh, these are actual buildings that are still around. And of course, they've changed a lot uh, over time and they've had been renovated and such, but that's the original architecture. Those are the original streets. And it was very important for us to use those original locations, but it also brought a lot of complications. And so uh, the, our camera was shooting there in 2018, but we're shooting the actual places from the 30s and from the 40s. And so you get this sense 
of these two time periods that are overlapping, that are clashing, which is something that is very much in line with the film itself, which is this contemporary meditation on the 1940s. And some of it was a really real hassle in terms of say the theater, there were four or five locations in the theater um, that we were shooting and sometimes having a continuity when we bring them together in the editing and uh, putting all that together, such as the cafe that appears on stage was a really complex operation, but I'm so glad we did it uh, because you do get that sense of authenticity there. Um, I'm just checking our time here. Um, another another difference of this film than your other work is the fact it's your first black and white film. And were there any unique challenges of shooting in black and white? This is your first black and white film. <laughs> so I don't know about other people, other other film directors, but for me, uh, as a film director, shooting a film 16 millimeter, shooting a black and white film, that's always that's a dream. That's a dream for every filmmaker is to make a black and white film. And so I did it. And so I'm quite satisfied because Sujo River was Super 16 and this is a black and white film. So did it, did it all. Um, I think probably we have time for maybe one final question. And maybe I'll just ask about the last, this is, uh, this film was finished in 2019. I think you've maybe worked on a new film since then, but a lot's happened in the world these last two or three years. Of course, we've been dealing with COVID-19. There's a lot of political turmoil in the world, um, a lot of instability. And I'm just wondering, through this last two or three years, has your, and all of, you know, the political, economic, social changes that we're all living through, has your own thoughts about the role of film in a time like this changed at all. Um, and so, during这两三年以来，我觉得全世界都经历过，就是非常巨大的一些变化，有疫情啊，有战争啊，呃，就是不管是政治、经济，或者社会上发生很多，呃，可以说是一个动荡的一个一个时代吧。那我就很好奇，
misinformation, all of this is becoming quite hazy. It's becoming a place where you don't know who's your friend and who's your foe, when someone's gonna just pull a gun at you and kind of come after you in some way. And so everything has been turned upside down. It's a topsy-turvy world in, in some ways. And in this situation, I feel that in some ways, film is not at all as important as we maybe once thought it was. Uh,非常嗯，电影完全不时尚，就是呃没什么用处。嗯，当然它可能还同时它可能还会帮助一些，就是比如说呃帮助呃那些隔离的人们，呃消磨一些时光。嗯，大概是这样吧。yeah, film is something that, you know, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't really uh, have a function in a sense. Maybe it helps some people who are quarantined spend their time and get through the day, but maybe that's it. Uh, uh, Uh,比战争,比大流行,比隔离,比审查要好得多。at the same time, we should thank, we should be thankful that we have film in our lives because it's a better, it's much better than a lot of the other stuff out there like war and disease and censorship and so many other things that are out there. So you have to see some films. So we can still go out there and see some films. And maybe that's a good place to end our conversation. So I wanna, uh, again, thank the incredible master, really one of my favorite filmmakers. Uh, for many years, I've so adored his work, and it's such a, a great opportunity to sit down with you. And I hope we get another opportunity. So thank you, thank you, and to our audience, um, go check out Saturday Fiction and. And besides Saturday Fiction, go look at Loya's incredible back catalog of films that are available, Summer Palace, Blind Mesh Saz, uh, Mystery, Love and Bruises, uh, Sujo River. Um, it's just a wealth of nuanced, multi-layered, reflective uh, films that I think uh, you will learn something from and you will kind of uh, give you some, some food for thought and reflection. So thanks again, everyone, and we will look forward to seeing you in future programs. 好,谢谢。